Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. This is Gottlieb's Target Alpha Pinball Machine. We did one video on this already before, this particular game. A gentleman brought us to it and said it would not reset. It wasn't resetting right, just wouldn't play. And uh, I think it's been in storage a while, but we took it and put it back together in the first video. And then it had a situation where basically it wasn't doing anything. And then we figured out that the bounce switch was, uh, wasn't was right. And then we got it to where it was just resetting constantly. And um, we uh, uh, we figured that out, why it was doing that. There's a bent switch. Uh, and now we're to the point where the thing will not start. So whenever you hit the start button, only thing that happens is you lose a credit. And now we're out of credits. If you put credits on it, with the coin switch, it doesn't actually add a credit. It just turns the score motor a little bit, right? It's also, it says tilt over here. And inexplicably, the fourth player lights stay on all the time. Um, whenever it was stuck resetting, they would move through and the four player lights would usually stay on the whole time. Uh, also, it says that four players can play at the same time, I guess because we've hit start so many times. So we've got some issues going on. Um, I'm going to start by cleaning the Jones plugs, where the playfield plugs into the bottom of the game, and then also where the bottom of the game plugs into the head. So we'll clean up those Jones plugs first and uh, see if something's not making a good connection. And then we'll trace through it a little bit and figure out why the tilt light's on. I think it just does that whenever you turn it back on after it being off. But uh, we'll confirm. So let me pull out the Jones plugs and let you see those. So here's the Jones plugs in the back. They're not really all that bad. And I'm... Um, ooh. Those are a little worse. This side we're getting there. I got to clean all those. That's first because you got to make sure everything's making a good connection, uh, the, basically the power lines through the machine. All right, I got all those cleaned up with sandpaper. Let's see if that changed one little thing. We're on. Game over. Tilt. Hit start. Oh yeah, we don't have any credits. Hit the coin switch. Doesn't add any credits. Let's add some credits just to. do it the cheating way. Alright, so it's still doing the exact same thing. Alright, uh, next up, score motor switches. Uh, I'm going to look at the tilt, though, to see if that's proper behavior. Okay, so the tilt light is on if the H relay has not been tripped. The H relay is the tilt hold relay. So if the tilt hold relay has not pulled in, the tilt light will always be on. So here's the tilt hold relay. We need that to pull in to turn off the tilt. So the way it pulls in is through the S relay, which we already saw was the start relay. But the start relay turns off after a while. And so when it turns off, you need this light box anti-cheat switch to not be open. And then of course you need this anti-cheat switch to not be open. We already looked at that one, I think, but we need to look at the one in the light box. Maybe that is our whole problem. And sure enough, someone has purposefully adjusted it so that it's not connected, which means this game has never worked since they did that. Because if the tilt hold relay won't stay on, then the game's constantly tilted. So with this switch, not connected, and you saw we just showed it on the schematics, It'll never work. So let's see if we get anything different. It's tilted because I just turned it on. But remember, it'll be that way until the start relay comes in. So let's see if anything different happens. Heck no. Nothing different happened, Joe. Not a thing. It's broke. <sighs> I got to edit that out. I had to edit that out. People don't want to hear you say that, Joe. People do not like it when you say that. It's true. All right, so when you hit start, 
It's taking a credit, Joe, but it's not starting. So we need to see if it's actually pulling in the start relay. Or I guess we need to see again what, what exactly that button's supposed to be doing. So this is the V relay, the replay button relay. It turns on the start relay. Okay. So when I hit the start, the replay button, they are both turning on. That's starting the score motor, which is immediately stopping. It all stops when it gets there. So we need to find our tilt relay that we've been looking at. Okay, it's that last one down there. Aha! Uh -huh. I see you, sucker! So that one's never coming in or something. Let me let me take a little look at that. Remember the start relay should pull that in. We were looking at the wrong one. That's the tilt relay, not the tilt hold relay. The tilt hold relay is this one. So when I hit the button, that should pull in, but it's not. So if I just push it in, that's turned on lights and stuff. And the way that fails is if the tilt relay goes in. Okay. So with it in, it's no longer it's no longer tilted. Let's see if it does anything different. No. But it didn't tilt it. Okay, so uh, we got to figure out why the start relay isn't making anything happen. We keep popping in the game over. Usually I don't fix them like this. I usually go through and I clean every switch first, but I'm trying to show you a few videos where you just work through the problems and maybe that'll convince everybody that you should clean everything first. <laughs> All right, got some time to look at it. Uh, typos, people, typos do me in. Okay, there is a tilt hold relay. There is a tilt relay, and there is a hold relay. So there's a tilt hold relay, a tilt relay, and a hold relay. Don't get them confused. So the hold relay is R. The tilt hold relay is H. <laughs> and the tilt relay is T. That makes sense. Come on, people. Come on. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be that? Come on now. Now let's look at the schematics. So I was looking at the schematics at the tilt hold relay, which says R, but that's not the tilt hold relay. That's the hold relay. It's a typo. It screwed me all up. So when we pushed it on and it made the the switch the light go off, that's not the one. No, that's not it at all. It's this tilt hold relay, the real one. That's the one we pushed in. <laughs> And then we turned it back off by pushing in the tilt relay, which is T to open that switch. Blah, 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 blah. So what's really going on here is, if I can find it again, where were we? Where were we, folks? Where, where, where were we? Yeah. The hold relay, R, isn't coming on. And the way it comes on is it's supposed to be turned on by a switch on S. The start relay. That's not happening. Okay, because I didn't clean it yet. Because I didn't do it in the right order. Because I'm trying to prove a point. Okay, so maybe it's still this anti-cheat switch on the front door. Nope, can't be that one because when I hit the replay button, it works. That replay button would not do anything if that switch was closed. I mean, if that switch was open. So since the replay button works, we know that switch, that switch, that switch, and that switch are fine. So it must be that when the S relay is pulling in, it is not turning on the tilt hold relay. Or it could be that the tilt hold relay is just burn up. That happens sometimes. You know how you could test it? Well, not the tilt hold relay, the hold relay. I'm going to go mark that out. The way you can test it is just push it in. It should hold itself on. Remember, this was open. It should hold itself on through a switch on itself. So let's test that. That'll tell us if the coil's any good. So if I just push in the tilt hold relay, it should stay. I mean, the hold relay, the hold relay, not the tilt hold relay. We already did that one. 
this hold relay it is in what in the well there went all of that okay so that's in so we know that's in everything's cool okay so we need the real tilt hole relay to come in to take it off tilt and that happens by either the O relay which is the ball return relay so that's not gonna happen or the AX relay should right so what happens is this AX relay flips and it connects that switch which then sends power down through here and turns on the tilt hold relay well the tilt hold re relay pulls in and connects there giving itself power from here and then the AX relay can switch back over there so we need the AX relay to, to flip so how do we get that to happen well the AX relay is the reset control re relay now we're getting somewhere that sounds like what we want doesn't it let me see if I can find it here reset control relay hello hello where are you let me let me find it so the reset control relay AX is tied to the transformer on one side and then it will come on and turn off our tilt uh, when the DX relay swaps now if you're thinking why do they do this like this it's because they're trying to reset the machine so they wait until something resets and then it makes the next thing reset and makes the next thing reset so they do it in an order so the DX relay has to swap the DX relay is the first ball relay okay so what makes the first ball relay come on so the first ball relay should be pulled in as long as it hasn't been pulled in before so see when this pulls in this will open by either the H the N or the M relay which is the points this is like 10 and 100 points something like that uh, or if the H relay hasn't been pulled in yet so we're in that same spot so this should be pulled in this is it here so I believe it is pulled in so since that is pulled in when the S relay pulls in that should be turning on the reset control relay now you see that it's subtracting a replay so to do that you have to have a replay on it you have to not be at zero as the score motor turns the switch is closing that actually does it the V relay has to be pulled in which is the uh, replay button relay so we've got that one in and that same switch on the start relay has to be in so since it's in it should be pulling in the reset control relay maybe it already is so I messed with the reset control relay a little bit let's see what we got that's more like it alright so something was going on with that I don't know hmm it's just there's a bunch of stuff people have been messing with it it ain't right people I'm gonna have to go through it all look it's saying one and four can play at the same time well it should they both shouldn't be on like that one or four should be on and then the match number is on but we're at ball and play one I mean we're in the game so the match should not be on so there's just people have been messing with stuff so I'm gonna have to go through it all um, which is what I usually do anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, lift the play field up and start cleaning all of the switches on all of these relays, and the switches on the score motor. Now we already did the Jones plugs, of course, but I'm gonna just go through and see if I find anything that looks all out of whack, like that one that we fixed on the the previous video. Um, and if I find anything weird, I'll let you know. But I'm just, I'm trying to make the point that yeah, you can go through and hunt. And we always do that, you know, whenever we, after we've cleaned everything. But you're on like a wild goose chase. Like, why is the, why is the match on right now? Well, that's something that I would have found whenever I cleaned through it. Why do I have two lights on? It's a one and a four player game at the same time. You know, it just, there's stuff going on. So you'll catch that stuff whenever you go through and just systematically clean everything. Um...
And then if you don't, you'll kind of have a good idea whenever you do work through the schematics like we were just doing of, well, I don't think it'll be that because we already looked at that. I looked at that. I was fine. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I fixed this, blah, 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 you know? So, so I don't think I can just peck through this one. I'm going to have to do the full shebang. Uh, so let me start cleaning some of these relays and that score motor. And if I see anything crazy, you'll be the first to know. Okay, so I'll give you an example of what you're looking for when you're doing this. This is the last ball relay. Now, this probably doesn't have anything to do with any problem we've ran into yet. But this particular relay is an interlocking relay. So it, it has two coils. So one pulls in. Right, and lets it go that way. And then this one pulls in. And it locks it down that way. So it's either on or off, and it stays that way. And the reason that these are good is because the coil doesn't have to hold in. So if you've got a switch that you need to turn on and then leave on like the whole game, or whatever, this works really good because it just goes click, and the thing holds on. Because of the, the way the relay is made. But you need two coils to do that, so it costs more and all of that. So typically they don't use a lot of those. Gottlieb did, though. They always had two or three on most of their machines. Um, so this particular one, if you look, so when it's pulled in, which it is, see this switch has opened. So when it's the other way, the switch is closed. So it's closed one way and open the other way. Right? But look at look at this one. It looks like it's closed. Let me get closer. Let's see if I can hold it steady enough. It looks closed. It is not closed. All right, so that's what you're looking for, just things like that. Now, how do you fix it? You just bend the, the blade a little bit. You should bend the small one, but this one the, looks like the big one has been bent by somebody. So you, you bend the blade until it's actually touching. And whenever it goes in, you want it to actually, you want the big blade to move the little blade a little bit. So is it touching now? It's still not quite right. Right? So you you want to bend it down here, not up there. Right? They make a little tool for it, or you can use a little tiny small screwdriver or something. But you don't want to go through and bend every little blade and mess with every switch, but that one's obviously off. So how do I know if it's supposed to close or open? This is the part that's the key to the whole thing. You don't need to know if it needs to open or close. It should just change. So if it's open one way, it needs to be closed the other way. If it's closed one way, it needs to be open the other way. And once you do enough of them, you can just tell by looking at it, okay, it's supposed to be open and it closes. It's just, it's super simple. I mean, it's the simplest possible thing, but it's a barrier for a lot of people because it's so simple that you would never think that, like you, you overanalyze it, you know. So that one's open, and then whenever it closes, I mean, whenever the relay goes the other way, it stays open. Well, that ain't right. That can't possibly be right. So that's what we're looking for whenever you go through cleaning them. You're just looking to find stuff like that. And if there's one or two in the machine, the whole freaking thing won't work right. Okay, I cleaned all the relays. found a couple switches like I was showing. And then I cleaned all of the reels on the score reel, the score motor, I mean, uh, and everything was fine. Okay, we've got this unit here in the front. I think I mentioned in the previous video that I thought maybe it was to help count the uh, drop targets. I'm not so sure. We'll have to figure out what it is. It may just be the ball count unit or something, but we're about to look it up. This unit is all messed up. This side I cleaned the uh, rivets, and it moves really well, but there's two switches on it. 
that are definitely not right. So someone has been messing with some of the switches in this game. Now I've mentioned before in previous videos, I don't really mind whenever they do that. You know, they're trying to fix the thing. They don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing about a lot of stuff too. Um, but here, let me show you how I know that they're not right. It's similar to what we were just talking about. Get you some light on the subject. If I can reach it. Boy, we're all the way in this thing. We're all the way up in it. All right. So one of these moves the real one way. This one on the back resets it. Okay, so you've got two switches here that this post and this post hit. Notice the cat here. I, I don't mind people, I'm not. Okay, so you see you see what's going on here? Something ain't right. This is not set up right. So if I move it, okay, we're all the way back one way, and this switch is open, and this switch is open. Okay, now if I can carefully, without you folks getting seasick, Really though, if you're the type that gets dizzy, you would have stopped watching my channel a long time ago. Uh, so let's move the other way. So did that one just close on the right? I don't know. Now it's closed. It's position three, we'll call it. Position four, position five, and that's all we got. But we're tight in here, folks. Look, it's not closed. The left one. So those aren't right. There's nothing right about either one of those, I don't think. I don't think the right one's correct either. Um, so how do you figure out how that's supposed to be? Well, we know that the left one's probably wrong because it's open and it just stays open. That bar probably is supposed to close it right now or maybe it's something else. I don't know. They might even have the whole thing mounted on backwards or something. I don't know. So we're going to look in the schematics and we should be able to figure it out. So here are the schematics we were looking at earlier. If you uh, need a copy of the schematics for a Gottlieb game, there's a company called the Pinball Resource uh, that makes reproductions of them. Gottlieb still protects their copyright. It's kind of the only way they can make money uh, by licensing the, that copyright, um, which gives companies the impetus to make reproduction Gottlieb parts. So. On one hand, you go, man, I hate to pay for a piece of paper, but on the other hand, it kind of helps keep them afloat, and that's why I can get every little freaking part I want for a Gottlieb pinball machine. So, I'm cool with it. All right, so, but this is the original set. Now, when they shipped the games, they had a set with it. So, where's yours? You didn't lose it, did you? Here, let me show you the company that has licensed the rights. Now, they don't own the rights. Well, I don't have it. I thought I had it. Well, these are the originals. Um, yeah, the Pinball Resource. Great company, great people. And they've got everything you need for a Gottlieb pinball machine. They just pronounce it different than I do. <laughs> so how are we going to even figure out what that thing is called? You know, I don't even know what it is. Well, if you look on the schematics, I'm trying not to make a reproduction of the schematics by showing it here on the uh, video. I'm trying to just show you parts of it, which I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Um, what is that? Over here we have this. The player unit. So, see they're drawing it as a square and then they have all these little connections. Well, this, it's not the player unit, because look at all those different rivets. There's 19 rivets, um, and there's one wiper that goes across it, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so that's not it. So that's not it. So it must be... You also have this one, the FS Relay Disc, the 0 to 90 unit. That's what I always call the match unit. So it has 10 little things and it lights up the match lights. Well, that's not it. I know where that's at, so it's not that. So we're looking for these boxes uh, to find what it is. Okay, so over here you have like, for instance, the fourth player thousands unit. 
Well, that's not it. That's just for the fourth player. That's the the little PCB that's on the um, fourth player. Thousands reel. And there's a bunch of other other ones. Okay, so now we have a bonus unit. Hmm. That could be, but that's that doesn't really look like what we've got. Ours has like three or four different little fingers on it. Um, so it doesn't seem to be that, okay? Now the bonus unit, where would that be then? That's probably it there. A lot of times they're marked. Right? So, bonus unit, let's, let's count the... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's like 16 wires, I don't know. That's a lot for the bonus unit. But maybe, let's look at it again. Zero through 14, that's 15 wires. And then there's one more, 16 wires. And of course you can go and you can look at the actual wire colors and, and see what lines up, which is what we're gonna do uh, once I figure out Now this looks promising. The coin unit. Second player coin line. Didn't we have five positions? That seems to have seven positions. Hmm. I don't know. One. I would I would count that as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The coin unit. Hmm. Maybe it's just to tell you. Look, we got a new robot vacuum cleaner that finally came in. It's China, though. Ugh. Oh, God. Uh, what else could it be, folks? I think it's the coin unit. So, how are we going to confirm? We're going to look at the switch, the wire colors. Okay. Coin unit. So somewhere on there, on three adjacent wires, it has a brown wire, a green wire, and a slate wire. Let's see if that's on ours. Brown wire, green wire, and a slate wire. Mm-hmm. I think it's the coin unit. But it's got a lot more wires. Look at them. Look how many. So it's got a... So... See how it's in different sections? So this side has one, two, three, four, five that are kind of grouped together. And this side has like three that are grouped together. And then this side has six that are grouped together. So this part looks like it has like seven or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something. Who knows? I think that's right, though. Let's see if I can find it elsewhere on the schematic. So here's another place with five wires and a black and yellow wire. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. It's the coin unit. So, if we can find two switches that say something like first position coin unit, break open at first position coin unit switch or something like that, or close at fifth position coin unit switch, then that'll confirm it. So I'm going to look around and see if I see anything that says anything like that. Okay, so I found the zero position coin unit switch. Now, here comes the confusing part. You're about to get really confused because I'm confused. I would read that as at the zero position of that switch, it opens. But that's not necessarily what that means. Because we don't know what position the coin unit is in when the game is in play. So if you look at the schematics, it says right here, and this is different on every set. This is just how Gottlieb was doing it at this time. At the different company, it might be different. Note, circuit is shown with the machine reset, ready for the first player to shoot the first ball, and the line cord unplugged. <laughs> right? So when you're in that position, where is the coin unit? 
Okay, so to get to the zero position, you subtract the coin unit, right? You would click that away until it gets it back to the zero position. And the way that happens is through the start relay and the reset control relay as the score motor turns. So it's basically going through as it's resetting and it's clack, 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 and it's subtracting the coin unit. So it's going to get it down to the zero position. And when it gets to the zero position, <laughs> is it going to open that switch? Let's see here. What would happen if that were to happen? If that were to open at zero, that would turn off the match light. Right? So since the reset takes this to zero, that must mean that the switch opens when it gets to the zero position. Hmm. But it's drawn uh, with the first player waiting to play. Hmm. Very confusing. Okay, so if we look at this coin unit, that's the zero position there. That's position one, two, and three. What they're showing you is that there's three sets of jumpers. One's at one, two, and three. Remember, this is drawn in the first player. Ball one's ready to go, so it's a one-player game. So those three are drawn there. So on a one-player game, those three jumpers are right there. The one-player coin light one, two, three, four players can play. The one player light is turned on by the game over relay. So the game over relay not being pulled in puts the one player light on. Once the game is over, this light will go off and it will jump up here. So since that's off, there is no way to light the one player can play light. That's because that's not what they want to do. Okay, so Moving right along, if you were to put in another quarter and you made it to this, now it's a two-player game, this coin unit would advance one position, and then this jumper would come down here and close that, which would turn on the two-player can play light. So now your one-player light would be on because the game over relay, it, you're in a game, and then your two-player light would be on. If you added another quarter, you'd, now your three-player light is on, and if you added a fourth quarter, now your four-player coin light is on, and all of them would be on because you're in the middle of a game, and all four of those players are playing. So just so we're clear, it's these lights. One, two, three, four can play at the same time. Remember earlier I was saying the one and the four light shouldn't be on at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. We're figuring it out. Okay, so at the end of the game... There is some kind of mechanism, although I don't completely understand it to reset all of that at the end of the game. So, the subtract coin unit that we were just looking at, the start relay and the reset control relay, as the motor turns, subtract the coin unit as the game resets. Because you're on a four-player game, it subtracts it down, blah, 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 right? As it's resetting. But look at this. The BX relay is the last ball relay, and the O relay is the out hole relay, or the ball return relay, which basically pulls in after the bonus counts down when the ball lands in the out hole. So I think what's going on is at the end of the game, it subtracts the coin unit too. So at the end of the game, it takes it to position zero. Now why would it do that? It's because they have this little thing in here. Now remember the one player thing will go off at the end of the game because the game over relay comes on. If this were to, re let's say you've got a one player game. So you're right here with your jumpers. Well the one player light goes off. Wouldn't you want at the end of the game it to actually say while it's sitting there in a tract four players can play? Right? You'd want that light bulb to be on. So they have a special little setup where this coin unit resets at the end of the game and this jumper moves up to the zero position which 
turns on the fourth player coin light. That's my theory, at least. So why do we need to know all that? Because I'm trying to figure out this freaking switch. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it should be open in the in the first position. We know that. I'm just trying to figure out where should it be when it's at zero. Right? I guess I just move it to the first position and have it open, but something should close it at some point, like we were talking about earlier. So let's look at the other coin unit switch. All right, so this may help us understand it. So this says fourth position coin unit switch, and it shows it closed. But again, all of this is drawn, you know, when we're in the first position. So I suppose this one is closed in the first position. And then when you get to the fourth position, it throws, which I guess would mean it would open. I guess. So let's see if that looks possible or if that looks like that's how it's supposed to be. All right, so... This is the zero position. So that should close at zero position if we're correct about it. If that switch were to close, that's what turns on the match lights. All right. But remember, when we were playing it, or when we, when we reset it or whatever, the match lights were on in the middle of the game. So how in the world is that possible? So I don't know. So we've got to mess with that. But... Just that's how I read it. At zero position, it will close, and it's showing it open in the in the schematics because it's showing it to you at first position. So that makes sense too. If it goes back to zero position and that turns on the fork and play light, then uh, that also is when it turns on the match. So that's why they have it go to zero to turn on the match lights. As soon as you put a quarter in, it moves it up to one. Put a second quarter in for a second player, it moves it up to two, three, and then four. Um, and then at four, I guess maybe that opens so that you can't put any more credits in the other side. It's just bent all to crap. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to make it, and it makes sense, you know, that's how it looks like it does. So I'm going to make it where this one closes at the zero position, and I'm going to make it where that one opens at the fourth position, which is actually the fifth position because there's a zero position, just to make it more confusing. Okay, so we're going to see what she does. Whenever I'm doing this, I like to like put some kind of score on it so it has to reset it. On these Godlibs too, a lot of times I'll like move the player unit. I've had them before where if you're on ball, zero, ball one, one player, everything's already reset. When that player unit moves around, it doesn't. It doesn't work right because you're resetting a game that's already reset. So I like to put something on it. So it has to reset that reel before it can get going. Now, um, look at how this is. Four can play at the same time. So that seems to be holding true to what we were talking about. I think at the end of the game, it turns all those lights off and turns on the four. Okay. Now, notice the first and second player lights aren't on. The third player lights are probably because that's where I just moved the, uh, the player unit to. It says tilt, and the match is on. Okay, so let's see if we can reset it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's not tilted. It says ball and play one. It didn't kick the ball out. The flippers are working. But look at this. The match is still on. And it says one and four can play at the same time. Now why would it do that? I think that... that uh, the disc on that coin unit might be in the wrong spot. Somebody may have took it off and put it in the wrong spot. The match thing, that switch ought to be open. That shouldn't be able to light up. So there must be something else going. So I'm going to leave it how it is, lift up the play field, and let's just look at and mess with that coin unit a little bit. Okay, so what's happened is the coin unit is still at position zero.
So that switch is still closed. That's why the match is on. Okay. So since we're at position zero, where are we? We have these these three um, jumpers here. One of them's up there, so that's turning on the fourth player coin light. And then the game is not over anymore, so the game over relay is not tripped. So the first player coin light is on. So that solves that mystery. So our problem is the coin unit isn't stepping up. Okay, well what else is the coin unit used for? If it's in the wrong spot, isn't that going to mess us up? Um, hmm. No, I guess not. It's just used for, um, the extra ball and stuff. So I guess it can work fine like that. It just messes up your lights. So to test our theory, let's move it up one position. So that turns off the match and it says one player can play at the same time like it should. So why is that not stepping up? Add coin unit. So it's a switch on the motor at 4C. It's a switch on the DX relay which is the DX relay. is the first ball relay. And it's a switch on the start relay. So that switch on the start relay um, also makes, uh, yeah, also makes the subtract replay unit work. So that one must be fine. It also makes the reset control relay pull in and everything's resetting, so that must be fine. So we know that it's not that S switch. It's probably more likely to be this switch on the DX relay. Those are kind of complicated to get just right because it's a make or break switch. It goes back and forth. So I'll check that switch again and then we'll try it again and see if we can get it to work right. So here is the score motor and this outside switch, it's always the outside ones, is the one that pulses adding to the coin unit. It's kind of hard to see. Whoop. So it's this, these two bla these two contacts, this one and this one. So as I turn the score motor, this falls down in these home positions. So watch what happens when I get around to that and everything transfers. Everything transfers except that one because it's bent. It's always the one on the end or the top or whatever. Something gets stuck in the machine and it grabs it and bends it. So like if you were to stick something in here and it hit that, it would bend it out and then it wouldn't go back to its normal position. So with that bent out, it never closes. It just stays open all the time. And again, I cleaned these earlier and I didn't see it. <sighs> you miss some, folks. You miss some. All right, so I'll adjust that, and that should fix our little problem with the coin unit. All of this for light bulbs. <laughs> I started thinking about it, and the, the whole purpose of the coin unit isn't just for lights. It's actually, when it says one, two, three, four players, it, it has to have some kind of ability to control that, too. So there must be another part of the schematics for that, and I found it. So this little section turns on the second player, third player, and fourth player. And it all has to do with telling the player unit how many times to move. So basically this is the player unit. So it's like ball one, player one, player two, player three, player four, ball two, player one, player two, player three, player four, ball three, player one, player two, player three, player four, ball four, player one, player two, player three, 
player four. Now remember, we haven't done anything with this shit. Uh, ball five, player one, player two, player three, player four. And then it this only moves one direction. So at the beginning of the game, it resets back to whatever the home position is. So that's the that you're hearing in the background is this going back to home position. So if it's only a one-player game, if this is ball one, when it goes to ball two, it has to go clack, 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 clack to get the ball two. It skips player two, three, and four. So the coin unit's all involved in that. So we should be able to tell if it's working, though, by just starting like more than a one-player game because we wouldn't have been able to play a two-player game because that unit would have never went up because that switch being in the wrong spot. So let's turn it on. See if it'll still reset. Let me add a little. Let me add a little scourge to it. Not to be confused with scourge. Um, oh, I haven't put it on free play yet, so need some credits. The operator would be happy to know that it won't play for free. Okay, ball one, player one. Is the ball in there? It's not kicking the ball out for some reason right now. Uh, but if I hit it again, did not work. Well, it'll steal a credit from us. Oh yeah, it did work. It's just the second bulbs burn out. <laughs> All right, well, we're working. We're working. I think we got it. Let's see if we can play it a little bit, even though the ball didn't kick out. All right, we're only going to play like one ball because the top flippers, the bushings are messed up, so I don't want to mess with it too much. But we'll see if, if anything seems to be scoring or what for the, the next video. Well, the ball shooter sucks. Look. <laughs> what, what an impotent ball shooter. Man, this thing, this thing never would have worked. I don't, this thing has, there's no way this thing has worked in 20, 20 years. There's no way. The ball shooter won't even get the ball to the top of the play field. The slam switches were, were stuck open. Uh, the coin unit won't advance, so they couldn't put more than a one-player game on it, even if they got it started. I've somehow done something to it where the ball doesn't kick out. Now, I think it did before. Um, but our flippers flip. Come on. Here, I'll flick it. It's scoring. You can see what a fantastic game it's going to be once we get it playing. All right, kick the ball out, huh? Huh? It's working now, right? Oh, I said we were only going to play one ball. We'll play one more. What a cool game. I remember this one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Look at the lights in front of the drops. So cool. It still needs a lot of work, people. Oh, you didn't get to see the drops. Well, you couldn't see the drops, so I gotta play one more ball now. You know, I don't want to, but. Look, Look how the lights come on when the drops fall. And you can shoot them, you can shoot them from the bottom. Crazy. We're going to play one more ball. I have to, folks, because I'm trying to see if the, the second ball of the first player shoots out. Okay, yeah, it does. So it just doesn't shoot the ball out the first time, but it does subsequently, right? 
All right, so now we know what's going on. And it went through all four players, and it started back at the second player. I mean, uh, at the first player again for ball two. And it moved up to ball and play number two. So um, I think if I turn it off, it won't reset the coin unit, though. So we can't test that part. But we'll do that in the next video. This one's gone really long. Uh, this is a really fun game, though. So it's well worth putting the trouble into it to get it fixed up. This is certainly a wonderful title, right? So make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Leave your comments down below of what you think so far. I'm not going to play it anymore. It's time to clean it up a little bit. Those bushings are dragging on the play field, on those small ones. Um, so we're going to put new bushings in it. We'll get that where they're nice and elevated and it's not going to mess up the play field. And... Uh, once we do that, we can test play it a little bit. But I still have to clean the stuff in the back box, still have to do the stuff under the play field. Um, but I think we kind of accidentally got it at least halfway flipping. So we'll keep working through all of the problems. Like I said, leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. Now, why do I tell you to do that? It's because it helps out the channel. If you give it a thumbs up, the YouTube computer goes, Oh, look at this one. Oh, would you look at this one? There's one that people like. And they spread it around because it's getting a lot of integration. Is it integration? That's not the word. It's getting lots of... Uh, what happens when you... Uh, what's it called whenever you... Uh, uh, it's not integration. It's not cooperation. Uh, user, viewer... You know, you when you people are involved, right? <laughs> Who cares? You get the point. Um, and make sure to check out my brother Donnie. If you don't know about my brother Donnie, he has a channel here on YouTube as well. The link is down below. I work on pinball machines with Joey, arcade games, jukeboxes, video games, stuff like that. Donnie does old buildings, old vehicles, uh, old cars. He just had a fire at his farm the other day. That was scary. Nobody was hurt. Nothing was hurt except a vehicle. So we did a video on that. Uh, so make sure to check him out. I'm over there with him a lot. And uh, we will see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we'll work on cleaning up the play field.